let's look at a different um, optimization problem. We previously found a maximum of a function with a given condition or constraint. Um, let's read this example, uh, which means I'm going to read it to you. And let's see if we can figure out what the question is about. So find the point in the first quadrant on the curve x squared y equals 2 that is closest to the origin. Now closest to the origin implies some form of a minimum but it doesn't give us a function it just that's what looks like it's going to happen this right here happens to be the constraint which is also known as what again that's right it could be called the condition or the condition if you were to graph this um, it's a cousin of y equals 1 over x in the first quadrant and it might look something like this and what we're trying to do is find that point maybe it's about here that is closest to the origin 0 0 we are looking for x and y coordinates of a point because it says find the point that is closest to the origin. So forget the condition for just a moment. How do you measure the distance from a point to the origin? What is this distance? Well, that's right. That distance equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. It can be solved using the distance formula, sometimes called Pythagorean's theorem. If you surf around uh, the internet enough, you'll find some other um, cultures and people that have definitely known about this, not just Pythagoreans. So uh, distance equals that. Well, let me just change this name to f of x, y equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. This, my students and visitors, is the function we're trying to find the minimum, the closest point to the origin. But the condition is it has to be on the graph. It has to be on the graph. So it's not quite real world, but the words are very easy to what I would say is digest and understand. So my condition g of x y is x squared times y that equals 2. That's my that's my condition statement. Alright now let's take this for a little test drive here. And I'm going to do some rearranging. I don't want to lose this good stuff I have here. All right. There we go. So the theorem would say that if you take the gradient of the function you're trying to optimize, that's going to equal the gradient of the condition statement. And I don't know why I called this a capital letter G. I just did. And it would be multiplied by a scalar for them to be equal to each other. So the vectors, these are vectors, are parallel to each other. Same direction, maybe not the same magnitude. So if you take the x partial derivative of this statement, you will get, well, let's write it out, um, 1 half x squared plus y squared to the negative half power multiplied by 2x. And if you take the y partial derivative of this, you'll get 1 half 
multiplied by x squared plus y squared to the negative one-half power multiplied by 2y. Ooh, next time, pause, and you do it before I do it. Okay, hit the pause button. That's supposed to be equal to lambda times, so what is the x partial derivative of this? Well, that's right, it's 2x multiplied by y. And then what's the y partial derivative of this? That's also correct, just x squared. Now, it's a little bit big. Let me do some cleanup here. Uh, half of 2 is 1. This is going to become x divided by square root of x squared plus y squared. And this statement here is going to be equal to lambda times this statement here. So that's 2xy lambda and then this here half of 2y is y divided by square root of x squared plus y squared that's equal to lambda multiplied by x squared and if you count the number of variables oops I lost my lambda there's my lambda. If I count my variables, I will see x, y, and lambda, but only two equations. And I remember then that my condition or constraint is my last equation to utilize. x squared y equals 2. There are many ways you could arrange these, but if you're in my classroom, I'm going to suggest that we get rid of lambda first and then find a way over to this equation to solve. That's what I would do. Okay, so that stuff up here is going to go away. Let's see if I can't leave the question in your view, though. All right. Now, if you were to take this particular set of uh, this equation here and solve it for lambda equals divide both sides by 2 times x times y you will get 1 divided by 2y x is reduced square root x squared plus y squared and then if you would take this equation here y over square root x squared plus y squared equals x squared multiplied by lambda but lambda is equal to this 1 over 2y square root of x squared plus y squared now watch this I'm uh, this went here this went here let me just come over here to save some space in my paper I'm drawing a map it happens oftentimes when you first solve a problem. At the end, somebody might want to read it. So I'm giving you some directions. All right, let's see what I have here. If I multiply both sides by 2y, I get 2y squared over that square root equals x squared over that square root, which means, therefore, 2y squared is what is equal to x squared. Now, let's take our constraint, the condition that must be met. See where it says x squared? Well, x squared is equal to 2y squared. equals 2 x squared equals 2y squared so 2y cubed is 2 y cubed equals 1 therefore y equals 1 if we're limiting ourselves to real numbers I'm so excited I could just retire right now but wait a second 
we did not answer the question which was find the point on the graph of this curve right there where it's closest to the origin. We just discovered that the y coordinate is 1. How do we find the x value? Well, that's right. Since x squared y equals 2, and we just discovered that y equals 1, I know that x squared is 2, and so therefore x equals plus or minus the square root of 2, but we are in the first quadrant. That means our coordinates are positive root 2 and 1. The point on the graph that is closest to the origin is square root of 2 comma 1. If you wanted to find the distance, that wouldn't be too difficult at all. I think you'll find out it's equal to root 3. That might be in the question directions as well. But this is an example of about, I don't know, 80-90% not calculus with just a smidgen of calculus to uh, keep us in this course. All right, there is the point in the first quadrant. Mission accomplished. Until we meet again, have a good one.